Good grief. That is what we're talking about today. Anthony Samroth, international therapist and life coach, and also the host of the Be Yourself and Love It podcast, which you can access on iTunes or on SoundCloud. So I want to talk a little bit about the importance of healthy grieving today, of good grief. Thank you, Charlie Brown. And um, a lot of people are now aware that we, through the course of our life, inherit uh, psychological wounds, some of them by the, our childhood experiences and some of them by later traumas and also we all suffer losses in our life, losses of bonds, of attachments and this is not just when uh, people die or we lose a, lose a loved one. Uh, as we get older we might lose some of our faculties, we lose the independence of youth when we can do we, we can be a lot more free and our parents are paying the bills. We can't always just sit around playing computer games on the weekends when we grow up. Um, access to places, rituals, um, all sorts of things. Partners, of course. But, uh, and people are now increasingly aware of the importance of undergoing a grieving process. But if you ask someone what to do to grieve properly... They're very unlikely to be able to give you any information on that. So I'm going to give you at least a, an exercise. Maybe if something strikes me, then you'll get more than one. Please, if you think this will be useful, share it on your wall. Share it on your wall. Share it on groups and things like that. So I'm not just speaking to the same people. I love you guys, but I want to speak to new people. And the way that I do that is through the kind people who share it on their wall. So there's a few things that you need Um to progress with your grieving process and one of those uh, the first one is uh, awareness awareness of the need of grief but also awareness of any wounds that you uh, may be avoiding grieving actually we should talk about some of the the symptoms or which would allow you to know that perhaps you've got some incomplete grief and i think things that are pretty telltale signs are people being forever sad or angry or depressed or just completely numbed out. Uh, numbing out is a way of avoiding uh, unpleasant emotions, and you'll notice people whose mind uh, strays can also be quite emotional. It's quite hard to just stay in the body. If you have trouble just sitting down cross-legged for 10, 20 minutes, which is the majority of people, that can be a good indicator that you've got a lot of unprocessed emotions. And um, even... Uh, chronic illnesses or depression can be, certainly obesity can be linked to incomplete grief, ennui, addictions, feel, uh, feeling like there's no point, um, loss of faith in other people or life, uh, uh, like the life itself, uh, and just exaggerated emotional reactions. And then there's the avoidance of topics, and not just topics, but say places or people or activities that might be associated with um, the losses that are that are the grief that our grief for is in um, complete for. So this is one of the things that you can look at. Do you suffer from some of these symptoms? And and sometimes maybe can they they be linked to particular periods in your life or events? A major one is grieving for the life we could have had. Oh, if I just done this, this and this, then um, maybe I would have got that job and I would have had this career. If only I could be more focused, then I could have been successful at something that I'm not successful at. Perhaps uh, if I played my cards right with someone, I'd be married to them by now, but I wasn't, uh, didn't have the awareness that I have now. These are things that, that we may need to grieve for. And you can actually after you watch this video, write an inventory of maybe uh, six to a dozen things that were major events in your life that you're not sure that you've fully grieved for. I, I know something that gets me sometimes is once uh, several years ago, I lost a memory stick with some plays and things that I was working on. And sometimes I say to people, you know, I'm still not over that because there was some really great work on it. And uh, I don't believe that I would be able to replicate that. So there's a grieving process for some for the loss of something like that. So 
one thing, first thing I said uh, was awareness. That's very necessary. The uh, and second thing is to basically have a pro grief attitude. In other words, that it's okay to have negative emotions and to have people around you that uh, will indicate that they too have a good grief policy. You know, the people, the kind of people who don't bat things down and say, "Well, look in the bright side." Oh, are you still more? Oh, are you still moaning about that and what? But you have so much to be thankful for and all these uh, associated cliches. Uh, look on the bright side. It could have been worse. Well, that's nothing, right? These are people who don't actually know how to be present for you. And uh, on my YouTube channel, you can you can check out my YouTube channel. I've got a video called Can Empathy Be a Learned Skill? If you type that into YouTube, you'll find it. And that will give you some tips tips for empathizing with people who are going through grief and will also give you some expectations of the kinds of things that you can say to help people overcome negative emotion to help people overcome the negative emotions and I will actually be doing another video on that in a few days time so you want to have awareness you want to have the notion that it's it's okay to have negative feelings and to be open to going into those feelings and exploring them. Particularly, I think journaling is excellent. Seeing a practitioner such as myself, you can get in contact with me if you if you think that getting in contact with me would help you. And um, then there is the um, basically learning to be there for yourself. This is an extension of of what we're talking about having a a pro. Uh, the extension of having a good attitude towards negative emotions because you can have a good attitude towards them but still know what to do, still not know what to do. So what we're talking about is being able to actually take some effective action and as I said I'm going to give you an exercise for that. So you need to learn to be there for yourself, that's actually what life is all about, learning to be an adult, learning to be there for yourself, to take care of yourself and that makes you powerful in such a way that it makes you increasingly capable of helping others as well and also doing the things that you want to do so you get a lot of satisfaction out of life. The better you learn at being there for yourself, the more space you've got to, to build upon that foundation. So you need to weed the garden and then you need to plant flowers. If you don't weed the garden, then the flowers ain't going to grow. So here's your grief exercise if you found this useful please share it um, and this was inspired by a friend of mine because she said that she needed to uh, grieve her childhood but she didn't know how to do that so spontaneously I thought of an exercise that might would be helpful for her because she was talking about the kind of parenting that she received and the kind of parenting she didn't receive and I said well I think a really great way to help you grieve the childhood since you feel sad about it but you don't know what to do is to write a journaling exercise, spend a long time put going into as much detail about the kind of childhood you would love to have had have had in an ideal world. Uh, talk about the kind of mentorship that you would have had, the adults around you, how they would have listened to you, what they would have taken uh, what interest they would have taken into you, what they would have done to help you cultivate your capacities. Because a lot of people who get in touch with me are more intelligent than the average person, but also more empathetic and sensitive and aware than the average person. And as a consequence of that, the, the loss of not having very inspiring adults who were as interested in them in all these things and the, and the thoroughness of life left them with a lack of mentorship, left them with a lack of an ability to fully reach their potential because there wasn't their people there to garden them and to help them bring out, out their gifts and now they're dealing with being um, not as well accomplished as they would have liked to be by this stage in their life. So it would if you don't know the difference between what you got and what you wanted, that leaves a lot of space to... Um, to not really be sure, to not be clear, and anything that's vague and nebulous creates resistance. You could write down a flawed description of your ideal childhood and just see what um, emotions will come up when you do that and uh, feel them out and write about how those feel 
uh, writing about events is not as powerful as writing about what you think and feel about those events. So always comment on everything afterwards. And through this exercise, you might get access to, to some of those emotions and it can also help you begin the process of compensating and finding ways to get what you didn't get that you wish you'd got in the future. If you write your 6 to 12 items that you think you would want to grieve for, then this will also help you um, get some inspiration for writing, writing, doing some journaling about those and being able to comment both on what you feel and think about them, not just uh, the events themselves, not just what happened, but the emotional content. Check out my podcast, Be Yourself and Love It. You can find it on iTunes or SoundCloud. And if you'd like to get in touch with me personally and get some counselling to help you through some of these issues, you can find email me, antony at beyourselfandloveit.com. Beyourselfandloveit.com, that's the name of my website. Thank you for tuning in. Speak to you next time.